next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to rejet these carburetors. So uh, I'll go through this fairly quickly, but uh, uh, we're going to use the uh, DinoJet Stage 1 kit, and it comes with all your goodies, springs, jets, needles, all the stuff that you're going to need. Here, I'll get you a quickie look at it. So this is the kit for my little 600 katana and what it does basically is, is it, it corrects for the excessive lean running condition that they had uh, established for uh, you know emissions and all that and of course this is going to be a race only application so we don't have to worry about complying with any strict emission laws and it's this bike doesn't have a catalyst on it or anything so so the first step you want to do is each one of these carbs has a little plug right here and that covers the what is essentially the idle mixture screws and what we have to do is very carefully drill a hole in them like I have here and then extract them and then you can see the idle mixture screws down here in these that I've removed the plugs from. So we're going to do that and then we can uh, start taking the tops of the carbs apart and we'll uh, clean everything up and put all our new jets in there and see how she do. Once you get your holes drilled in there like I showed you previously here then you want to run a wedge of screw down in there and then use a uh, you know you can use something like this to wedge it in there and pop that puppy on out and it should come right on out like that and that's how you get those out and I should I should uh, stress that in the instructions they tell you to be very very careful when you're drilling these little cups out because you just want to barely penetrate the top of the cup you don't want to go down in there and booger your mixture screw up so there now we got all four of them out let's get her tore down the rest of the way okay now once we took the top caps off and just there's just four screws you pop it off and there's a rubber diaphragm in there and you just pull it and the slide out and we've set those aside for the moment then the next thing you want to do is there's a little screw that goes here that holds the uh, holds this float assembly in here take that out and you have your uh, you'll have your needle and seat here it's held in by another little screw and that just pops out it's got a rubber o-ring on it and then we'll put our new uh, needle and seat in there and now I've kind of gotten ahead of y'all here uh, the floats are already set and they're good to go these things are notoriously tricky to set the float level on so uh, I would just say to make sure you follow the uh, you know whatever is applicable to your motorcycle because uh, while some of the procedures may be similar you know I would definitely recommend getting the service manual for your bike or you know just Google Foo, you know look at uh, Google, the Google gods, they'll tell you, you know other folks out there who've gone through and done it before you, and uh, and figure it out. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to the instructions here because on this one it says here I'm going to move the vacuum slides from carbs, remove stock needle and spacers, blah blah blah. So then I remove the stock main jets and replace with the dyno jet main jets provided. If you're running the stock exhaust, 
install the DJ-110 main jets. If you're stock running an aftermarket exhaust with a high flow baffle, use the 114s. So they also tell you if you're using the K&N air filter, uh, then uh, we'll need to use a main jet that is six points larger. So we're going to need to run the DJ-116 in here. So since we're already at the DJ-110 with the, uh, uh, the fact that we're running the through and find all our little jets and we will uh, pop those little puppies in there that's going to be this bad boy right here so stay tuned okay so I got my 116 jet in here it looked like the factory one was almost like a 98 or something it was really small but that's not surprising because these things are uh, uh, these things are notorious uh, you know, for being jetted super lean. So, now the next thing we're going to do, like I said, anytime you use a jet kit, uh, I strongly recommend that you get the uh, uh, rebuild kit for the carburetor with all the new, all the new gaskets or O-rings in this case, because uh, you don't want leaks. So we're going to pop this bowl O-ring out of here because. I said we don't want any bowl fuel bowl leaks and we'll just pop that little joker out of there and pop in our new one and we'll get this puppy in there like so course you never want to go in there like they're supposed to but if you're very delicate very careful then get them in there and you'll be good to go now three more carburetors to go and uh, we'll be done with uh, the jetting and the floats. Then we'll come back and we'll do the, the needles. Alrighty then. So we counted all our parts that we pulled out and made sure we we're not left with any extras. This is not a situation where you want extra parts. So uh, I painted the slide covers get a little splash of color there and uh, now we'll put it back on on the cart uh, it's nowhere near tuned where it needs to be but uh, we're at the point where you can test fire it and uh, and run the engine so get a little sneak preview here <laughs> One thing that I learned uh, about go-karts is that the steering on them is nothing like a uh, regular car uh, unless you have a differential in the back. So apparently what we have to do here is since the go-kart is heavier um, makes this a little more difficult but with a solid axle they increase the caster on the front alignment 
so that when you turn the wheel, the tire goes down and picks up on the inside part of the cart in the turn, thereby shifting weight off of the inner wheel, allowing it to slip. And uh, that way, uh, you know, you can go around a corner with it. Because right now what happens is, is it fights you and tries to understeer. It wants to keep going straight because of that solid axle is pushing both tires evenly. And though go-karts apparently have a bit of extra caster built into them, we need some more with this one. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to make our own uh, adjustable uh, mount for the spindle so we can adjust our, our caster. Now, on your typical cart, you kind of have like a C-shaped bracket here that your spindle goes in. And we're going to replicate that, but we're going to weld ours. So we will go and get our spindle, which is right here. And we have some metal cut similar to what's on the cart now. And then we have some more metal over there and some more metal here that we'll use to make our adjustable bracket. So time to get to welding and grinding and cutting. So the humidity in here is terrible because we have a thunderstorm going on outside. But what we're going to do is we're going to measure our spindle with our caliper here and see what space we need or how big our little C thing needs to be. And that's roughly two and a half inches. So let's see if I, I don't know if you can see that. This thing is lens is all fogging up. Actually, I'm surprised the camera hasn't shut off. So. You recording? Yeah. All right, here we go. 